Babylon arrived in Baghdad with the names of 35 Jews believed to still be in Iraq and hand-drawn maps to where they lived. The list came from members of the Jewish community who'd already fled. We went to this home in what was once uh, the, the Jewish section of Baghdad. We knocked on the door and this 90-year-old gentleman comes outside and he is just charming. He just has these intense blue eyes and he speaks beautiful English because he had worked for the British Railways in the 50s until they fired him because he was Jewish. And we went in and we talked with him and what I saw was this lovely, charming, delightful man who lived in a tiny room. It was just heartbreaking. But not as heartbreaking as some. Regina was 75 years old, and Regina has such terrible curvature of the spine that she literally is bent in half all the time. And she lived up a steep flight of stairs with no running water, and so she had a little faucet at the bottom of the stairs and she would have to sort of crawl up the stairs and step by step move a pail in front of her. During that week we saw a lot of people and a lot of elderly people in this small community living in very very poor conditions with little or no medical care at all. A week later Rachel returned to Baghdad to see who in the Jewish community there would like to leave. We went and saw Sasson and sat down with him in his little room and I said, would you like to go to Israel? And he finally looked at me and he said, I'm 90 years old and every day I get weaker. I'm just not that strong and my heart isn't very good and I'm afraid that I'll die. He said, I think it's better if I just stay here. And I started to cry and I looked at him and I said, it will break my heart to leave you, but I understand. That was a Wednesday. And on Friday, I just, I wanted to go visit him. And he came to the gate that day and he just, he wasn't right. We became very worried. And we said, no, come inside. And we put cold compresses on his head and on his neck because he was just burning up. So about two o'clock in the afternoon, he, he sort of opens his eyes and I'm sitting there and I'm holding his hand and he looked at me and he goes, if I go with you, do I need a passport? I looked at him and I said, no, no, you don't need anything. Don't worry. And he closed his eyes and he went back to sleep. And about an hour later, he opened his eyes again and he looked at me and he goes, if I go with you, do I have to do any bureaucratic things? And I said, no, 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 I'll handle everything. I promise you won't have to do a thing. Just closed his eyes and went back to sleep. So Sunday morning comes and I'm like, okay, let's go see how he is. We were very, very worried that he wasn't gonna make it. He was so sick. And he comes to the gate on Sunday morning and he's just his old self and he opens the gate and looks at me and says, where were you yesterday? I was so worried about you. And I just gave him a big kiss and I said, oh, I told you I couldn't make it yesterday. I said, but you look better. He goes, oh, I feel fine. I told you I would be fine. And about 15 minutes into our conversation, he looked at me and he said, you know, I would never break your heart. And I sort of looked at him quizzically and he said, I'm gonna come with you to Israel. He said, I realize I really need to be taken care of. I said, and we will take care of you, I promise. Nine Jews left Baghdad on two chartered flights last year in July and November. The departures intense and emotional. At 90, Sasson walked away from everything he had ever known to board an airplane for the first time in his life. You know, I've been doing this work for 25 years. Baghdad and these people were different than everything. They were so few, but they needed all of us so much. And we just didn't know it. Regina, the woman bent in half from the curvature of her spine, 
walked off the plane in Israel in bare feet. With proper medical care, her health began to rebound immediately. A few months after uh, Sesson got to Israel, I happened to be in Israel again, and I went to visit him in, in the home for the aged that he was living in. He had put on 20 pounds and his hair was long. And it was so wonderful to see him and we were sitting there and we were talking at this table and in the home and all of a sudden a, a telephone starts to ring. And, and we're looking around trying to find a telephone and Sasson reaches into his pocket and pulls out a cell phone and says, hello. And it was just the most wonderful thing. It was, it sort of was like, oh, this really was worthwhile. This, we did good here. Aaron Brown, CNN, New York.